Hello again. Good uh, morning and welcome to Biology IGCSE Biology Classroom and No 610. The class code, the course code is. And uh, today I want to discuss one topical question uh, or past paper questions um, about the next chapter, one of the chapters into your book which is a very, very important chapter 14. And it is about the uh, one part of it is about homeostasis. And the, the chapter 14 is all about coordination and response. So we we'll start with the first question. Question number one. So uh, one of the things is that when you read the question is that our multiple choice, you need to make sure that first you have read and understood the question very well and you know what actually is asking from you. And then you, uh, if you can guess the, already know the answer, you just go and find that option that matches with your, what is in your mind already and choose that one as a correct answer. But you're not sure, please read all these um section is this option which is provided for you one by one and read very well because some of them they look like similar or they look like right but they are not they are a very small track in it so you have to read and understand them too and if you cannot find the correct answer one of the ways is that to find out those that are wrong and then omit them one by one to reach to the correct answer so the first question asks, what would be the effect of vasodilation and sweating on the body temperature and other amount of moisture on the surface of the skin? The first of all, I want to talk about uh, for those ones that are a little bit uh, got problem with the terminologies and also maybe with these vocabularies in this section. I will try to explain it very well for them, one by one, so, um, so it's not for those perhaps the students that are already master in it. So what is vasodilation? Vasodilation. I want to uh, actually break this word apart to uh, the root of it and give you uh, the definition of it. When you want to find out the meaning or root of one, for example, terminologies, that's the best way to search in the Google uh, and give you the uh, meaning or each. Or you can type the whole term or you can just put section by section. So what, so what, so is related to a vessel or vessels, especially blood vessels. So for example, we have vasodilation Okay, um, that's a dilation. I found the definition here. I, I omit this board. Dilation. dilation means the action or condition of becoming or being made wider, larger, or more open. So, by knowing this, that vasodilation will mean that when the blood vessels they open up, they become larger. Which part of them? The lumen of the blood vessel. I will show you where the lumen of blood vessel. Which part it is? Okay. This part, not outside, not from the diameter here, not from here to here. The inner tube, the inner tube, actually is called as a lumen. This is the lumen of the blood vessel. It can be arteries, it can be capillaries, it can be veins, it rolls or anything. So you see that usually in the arteries, the lumen are smaller compared to the vein lumen. So vasodilation means that when the lumen or the inner tube dilates or become wider, it opens up. Now we go back to the uh, question.
now I'm com going back to this. So, and uh, sweating. So effect of the vasodilation and sweating. Sweating, you know, it is when do you sweat, there is a water coming out of your uh, skin pores. And it's not only water, it's, mi it's mixed with the salt, urine, some ions and minerals. It also leaves uh, your body through from your skin pores. And on the body temperature and on the amount of moisture on the surface of the skin. So you have to say that what happens to sweat in our vasodilation, dilation, uh, body temperature and the moisture on the skin, when do you have vasodilation and sweating, how it affects the body temperature and the moisture on the skin. It means that, again, so the effect of what kind of the effect is vasodilation opening up uh, of the lumen of the blood vessels and sweating has on the, your body temperature and, the amount, and how moist your skin will be, the surface of your skin, dry or moist, how it would be when become dilated. First, you have to understand when vasodilation happens, what actually, what is the reason, uh, how, why it should happen after that, uh, what is the effect of this dilation on the blood circulation. This is the structure of your skin. This is the hair. And the hair can actually become erected or stand straight, or they can lay down on, on, the, on your skin. Uh, and also by this kind of muscle here, which is attached to them, these, uh, these kind of muscles are called as the um, erector muscles. It means that they erected or is caused them to stand straight, stand up like this, to raise. And there are lots of capillaries. I mean, the very really, really thin or the branch of the um, your... Uh, it can be veins and the arteries, we call it an arterioles and also uh, uh, the venules. So the atrial is here and the branches of it, which is surrounding the, all these hairs and supplying them by the nutrients and the oxygen, each of the cells. And we have another sweat gland here, the sweat gland that the, uh, produces sweat as a combination of the urine, water, and some salt and minerals. And this is your, the, the blue one is the vein. This is the dermis that you see the receptors can usually are located here, like a pressure torch receptors, the other cells that are very unique, specialized, just to receive the, um, some stimulus that are the stimulus like the uh, changes in the pressure or any kind of textures or you under touch something so you can feel it and this is the nerve ending or, or this is the pain and the temperature receptor so another type of it and this is the epidermis the lay, upper layer of your derm or skin and this is a fatty tissue uh, we call it the adipose tissue. Adipose means fat, or it contains lots of fat in it. And it's, to pro it's a kind of protector and also insulator. It doesn't let the heat to escape from your skin, keeps you warm, and maintain the energy inside. And also, it protects you from any external damage. And this is the muscle on the, the fatty tissue. Now, um, there is, a, of course, an opening here, too, uh, at the, where the hair is coming out. And these are the sweat pores from where the actual water is evaporated or comes out of, on your skin. I want to show this one also to you that what happens. So... Um, we have, for in order to regulate your body temperature, the body always should maintain in 37.5 around that. 
Celsius and it should not be like too high or too low. Otherwise, the enzymes, hormones, they won't act. If it's too high or too or low, it affects the uh, enzymes and the enzymes can be denatured if the enzymes don't work. There won't be any kind of the cell production or anything, or the whole uh, system will be shut down. So it's very dangerous. So that's why it, uh, the temperature of your body needs to be kept always same. In order to do that, for example, when you are very hot or you feel very hot, uh, you have fever or you, have, you are running outside under the sun or working for too long and the hot, uh, under the hot, for example, weather. So you, uh, your body systemically is starts to produce sweat. How it is, you feel, you see that your face become red, your skin, and that's the reason is that now because the blood vessels, they open up and let the blood to rush on the surface of your skin. The reason is that we call it as a vasodilation. The vasodilation uh, here. So when the temperature rises about 37.5 in your body temperature, then the hypothalamus of your brain and also the skin detects that change in the environment, the temperature in the environment, and also it causes the vasodilation, opening up of the blood vessel lumen, and this opening up causes the more blood to pass through. It's like a tube. It's like a hose that you want to water your plants with. So the, the bigger the lumen is, that inside tube, the more water will pass through. The smaller it is, of course, um, it will be less, less stream of the water. So when it open up, there will be a rush of the blood toward your skin. And also at the same time, you, the, the hairs, they flat, they lie flat against the skin. So they lie on the skin. So the reason that they lie on the skin is just to open up to let the uh, the rest in the resting point, so they let the uh, actually to water to easily escape, or the heat be easily uh, exchanged with the surrounding uh, area with the air. Otherwise, if they stand like a straight, they trap the air between them, and the air is a kind of insulator and doesn't let the heat to escape. We will, they they want to let the heat to escape from your body, so they lie flat on your skin. And after that, because of all this thing happening, we have more increase in the sweating. I mean, more water so, and urine will be left from the sweating pool, okay? So it, it actually, so when you sweat more, of course, you become, your skin become more damp, more, uh, it's more uh, uh, softer, um, more moisture on it, more water, more sweat on it. So, after that, that blood also that is rushing toward your skin carries more heat, more heat towards the surface of the skin. This heat actually will be uh, now exchanged with the outer area, this air here. So they come here, they exchange and send the heat here toward the surface of the skin, and they exchange the heat with the out part. And then also those waters or the sweat that they have come out of your skin, they will uh, be placed on your skin. And after that, they absorb heat energy from your skin or your bloodstream, which is uh, exactly on the uh, epidermis, and they evaporate. And you know the evaporation, when it removes heat from your skin, it causes you to feel cooler. You feel cooler and a bit colder. So this is how it uh, lowers down your, the temperature of your body. Everything works together. Now, body temperature. So because of more sweating um, and also vasodilation, so because there is more evaporation of the sweat and it lowers down your uh, temperature of your body and the skin, so the body temperature drops. So the answer can be one of the A or B till now. So C and D is wrong because the body temperature doesn't rise when you have more sweat or have vasodilation. 
The next thing is that to guess which one between A and B is now is the answer. Look at the next part. Moisture on the surface of the skin decreases or increases. So if you are sweating more, you are more water coming out of your skin and, and, line, and actually is placing on your skin. So what does that mean? Your, your skin surface become more moist, more humid, wet, so it should actually the moisture increase. It should be increased. So the answer should be B. A is wrong. So here, by vasodilation, more blood rushes towards your surface of the skin. More heat from your body will be transferred to the surface of your skin. And, uh, and also, uh, you sweat more. So the water comes on the surface of your skin. That water or the sweat absorbs heat from that uh, actually blood which is coming and bringing that hot actually temperature of you uh, the heat from your body and it evaporates evaporation has a cooling effect so it cools your body down so that's how your body temperature decreases and the moisture of course because you are more sweat on your skin so you, uh, your skin surface will be moist or wet question number two what would be the pupil size and lens shape of a person reading a mobile phone text message and in a bright, brightly lit room? So let's have a first look at the structure of the eyes as a, one of the sensory organs. As this section is about your sense organs, so I just want to have a look into sense organs that are the contain group of the receptors that respond to specific stimuli and the changes in the environment. So we have different uh, sense organs in our body. One of them is skin, as we already uh, have shown you, and tongue inside your mouth and nose on your face, ears uh, on your head and both side, both lateral, and the eyes are two on the front of your face. What is it sensitive to? What kind of the stimulus it, is, it gets? What kind of the changes? Skin are sensitive to pressure changes, heat changes, or temperature changes, cold, heat and cold, and also pain. So they have pain receptors. And what tongue is sensitive to any kind of chemicals in the food and the drinks because the food and drinks are the chemical molecules so they break them uh, apart and they can they can or the, that kind of special cells and receptors inside your tongue you can sense it you can get it at the stimulus and you know what actually it is nose is sensitive to chemicals in the air because we have also like a smell is like of the chemical molecules or lots of chemical molecules in the air so we our nose is able to detect ears are sensitive to the sound and the movement why movement because you can you can balance yourself and also you have a sense of coordination you know where you are going to what we are the orientation of your body and also the direction of the direction you can feel you can sense it you can have a sense of uh, for example you can get the sound any noise you can hear it and also eyes are sensitive to the light the light or like all the light of the spectrums it is very sensitive so skin is a the type of the sense here is a touch and uh, temperature for the skin and the tongue is taste you taste sense of the taste sense of a smell is for nose sense of hearing and balance is for ears sense of sight is for eyes now um, we will go further a bit to know about the structure of the uh, eyes. The eyes structure is this. Um, uh, perhaps you all have seen these, your different, but the thing that we see is only this part, which is exposed outside. And you see the uh, this part, which is cornea. And then after that, there is another part which is the pupil here and after pupil is a lens is a lot it's like a, a magnifying glass lens like that one but not like made of the glass and um, there, there, are, there are so cilia muscles there are all kind of muscles 
that you that are here placed here at the both side and we have here iris and then we have suspensory ligament these are another kind of the ligaments are not the muscles but they are the ligaments that are helping to uh, actually change the shape of the lens they become if they pull it if they pull the lens from both sides like by contraction they can make the lens thinner or and or less curved the curvature decreases or maybe they can be relaxed if in the case they are relaxed it is more curved increases the curvature become fatter more round then we have uh, uh, we have retina this spot and fovea this board the other optic nerves the other cells the other nerves that they send the signals message to the brain all of them together the message is send it to the nerve uh, to the brain the job of the cornea is the trans uh, is a transparent lens that refracts actually lights as it enters the eye so in the cornea there is a refraction of happen where is it here so that is the job of it it, it bends it in, inside bends the light so it lets it to pass actually cross through the lens not to go like scattered or uh, reach to other parts then we have iris the iris it controls how much light enters the pupil it means the light intensity should be controlled by iris this one the ciliary muscles also attached to it so it's uh, the iris controls the the amount of opening of this side here it can be closer so it become a smaller hole here the entrance becomes smaller or sometimes it pulls actually it goes away so it opens up so the this entrance or the where the light enter will be bigger so more light will enter into it so it, it controls the amount of the light that enters into the eye if it is too light so so bright outside so because this too much light may damage the cell of the eye so it actually closes a bit to just let a bit of some small amount of the uh, light beams to enter into the eye so it doesn't damage the eye but if it is very dark outside or very uh, dim light it is so um it opens up and let more light actually enter into the eye the, the lens that i told you that is like the lens of magnifying glass a transparent disc that can change shape to focus light onto the retina so it focuses the light onto the retina the retina also contains light receptor cells two types of two types of the light receptor cells one of them are rods, the other one are called as cones. The rods are responsible to detect the light intensity, how much light, how much bright the outside is. Then the cones are responsive for, responsible for the detection of the color of the light. So the cones are responsible for color and the other one rods are for light intensity how bright the brightness and darkness optic nerve is a sensory neuron that carries impulses between the eye and the brain it sends the impulses those electrical impulses that are created from the uh, actual receptor to the brain it's optic nerve so the pupil is a hole that allows light to enter the eye i'll show you that pupil that the iris was actually able to control the size of the pupil small or big the bigger it is more light can enter the smaller it is the less light can enter so it controls the iris control the pupil size controlled by iris contraction or relaxation um one more thing is that about the 
uh, retina is full of these rods and the concerts, all those um, actually uh, actual sensory cells here. And then uh, on the fovea is the where actually the light will be focused on. It has the maximum number of the cells. And of course, the clarity of the uh, image that we get there is very high. And um, there is one more thing that we need to know is in the place that the, uh, the nerve actually uh, is leaving the nerve uh, the end of the actual optic nerve, they gather the bonda here and then they leave the eye towards the brain. Um, here is called as a, uh, it's very, in a very short distance from the fovea, as you can see, and it's called as a blind spot. What a blind spot is, maybe uh, you have heard this frequently. Uh, uh, you know that at the back of your eye is the retina. So your retina has light, lots of light sensitive cells and they send a message to your brain about what you see. Um, so here, um, is it a spot there in the retina where the optic nerve actually connects? In this area, there are no light sensitive cells. This part of your retina, which is called the blind spot, can't see. So we call this as blind spot, blind you can't see. It's a spot that doesn't see. And it's where actually the nerves are leaving the actually your eye to connect them to the brain. Most of the times we don't notice the blind spots because the spot in one eye doesn't match the spot in the other eye. That's why we won't notice that. So that is the, actually, the sophobia is where we get the maximum, actually, clarity. And because the, all, lots of, all the lights are actually uh, been focused there on it. And also um, the uh, so uh, also the blind spot is where the nerve actually connects the all your cells here, the end of them in the connection the optic nerve, and it lifts your eye. So here is blind; you won't see because it's a spot which is uh, your eye cannot see. You cannot get any. Uh, light or anything because it doesn't have the light sensitive cells. Okay, I think this uh, about the structure of the eye and everything would be for the time being about this picture enough. So I go back to the question to see what else is necessary to explain. Now that we have understood the structure of the shape, we go back to see what actually happens when we are uh, in a dim or bright light. The pupil reflexes. So uh, when in the dim light, this is the what you get here, what happening to the uh, iris and the pupil here. In a dim light, the pupil dilates. It open up dilation. Never forget dilation means to open up, to open, to become widened to more wide, the width increases. In the bright light, it decreases to less, less light should pass to go inside your eye because otherwise if you, if you stay the same size, that light intensity, amount of the light entering into your eye will damage the, uh, the, those uh, light sensitive cells in your eye. So that should be uh, constriction sometimes and sometimes dilation. So in a dim light, when dim means uh, it is uh, very gloomy, it is uh, less light there, it is darker, but it is darker, this pupil actually, the size increases, it means it dilates, it widens to let more art light to pass through. And in bright light, when it's too bright outside, too much light, like in the morning. So you see that it gets smaller, the pupil gets smaller. And that also, it means, we call it as a constriction, or it constricts, so it means it gets narrower or smaller in size to let, let uh, the less light to pass through it. 
And see also what happens again here. In the dim light, we have two types of the muscles here. One of the muscles around this in the pupil is, and you can see this is your pupil, okay? And when it is dim light, usually it gets dilated. It should be opened up. So something should pull from all everywhere to widen it, to open this up because there are a ring of the muscle there. Radial muscle of iris. So this is the iris area around this pupil. This is the pupil. This is the iris. And there are muscles. There are two types of the muscle in your iris. One of them is radial. Radial means to radiate like a radius of a circle. So it means that they start from here, the center, and then they continue towards the edges of this uh, eyeball here. Circle. So these are the ones, they are the radial muscles. You can see the uh, cursor here of my mouse. So then we have circular muscles. Circular from the name, it means that they are rounded like this. Okay? So if we want to open up these radial muscles, they need to contract. Contraction means to become to, to become shorter. When they become shorter, it means that they are pulling this from uh, outside. So when they pull it, when they pull the round muscles, the round muscles should be relaxed so that they can actually be collected uh, here close to this area. So this one will be opened up. This iris will become bigger because they, uh, sorry, these uh, pupil become bigger because the iris muscles, the rounded ones are relaxed and these uh, radial ones are pulling, they are uh, contracted. There's a constriction there. They contract, they pull it, so this opens up. When there is a bright light, it becomes smaller. You see, look at the uh, pupil is very small. How does it become small? Now the round muscles should contract if they want to gather up in the middle to make this a smaller. So if if the both of them is like the radial and the circular muscles are contracted, this cannot happen. Because the circular muscles are gathering in the middle, all there is a contraction, they become a stiff. The pull from everywhere, the iris. So these radial muscles, the radial muscles should be relaxed. So they let that, the circular muscle to core, to, to uh, gather in the middle. Or they pull the, uh, them, the radial muscles. So the radial muscles are relaxed and the circular muscles are contracted. So you see that the pupil here is smaller because the outside is very bright. It's so shiny. That is what is happening. Going back to the... Uh, okay, now the pupil size and the lens shape of a person reading a mobile phone text message in the bright light room. So, um, so first the pupil size now, because it is bright little, that's the, the reading a mobile text message, it means it is very close, I mean being looking at the close, near or far, uh, I didn't talk about it, so it's related to the shape, actually it defines the shape of the lens of the eye, so it has nothing to do with the pupil size, but that's the bright light room, it means it's outside is very bright, it's shiny, it's not dark, so it affects the pupil size, that's how it affects, so because it's outside is very bright, well I actually expect the pupil size to be small, so either C or D is correct, and I reject A and B, definitely they are wrong, I don't get for the lens check, now in order to guess which one between C and D are correct, I should go for the lens shape. Lens shape is defined by how far or how close the objects that we are looking at are from us, from our eye. So the mobile phone is so close to our eye. So let's see what happens to the shape of the lens when we look near and we look far. I found a very good photo here to explain the diagram. So this is a near object to your eye and this is a far. 
the, uh, the objects that are in distance and you are looking at them. So let's see how the shape of the lens, the diameter of it changes and what happens inside your eyes. In order to see the object, to get an image of it, the light that comes, they are actually, on this part, they are actually refracted. They bend down, they pass through the lens, and the lens diameter should be somehow that focuses the light, all the light, on the fovea. If you, you remember, the fovea has the maximum number of the, uh, uh, these sensory cells, it's light sensitive cells, so that the most clarity it gets. So all the light rays should be focused here on the fovea. No matter what. So even, even anywhere, if you're looking at the far, so the change, the, the diameter or the size of the lens should be changed somehow. So it focuses all the light rays here on the fovea again. If it doesn't change, so the, the all light will be focused here in the middle of the light eye or something on the back of the uh, eye, which is we cannot see, you won't get any vision, you can't see. You need uh, then to get aid from. Uh, uh, any kind of surgery, or you can use eyeglasses or anything. Okay, the people that's the health, not healthy eye. Then we said that there are ligaments here. The ligaments that are attached to the lens and on the both sides. The ligaments they can actually be contracted. They are constricted or contracted, or they can be relaxed. When they are relaxed, they get longer. When they get constricted or they are contracted, they are shorter in size, in length. Okay, when they get contracted, they become shorter in length. So they pull the lengths from both sides, and then either when they are relaxed, they let the lens to just go back to the normal shape. They don't put any pressure or strain on their lens. So if the object is near, these ligaments here, they just leave the, her lens alone and they don't pull it anymore. So it become round, it become fat, more curved. So it can focus the light rays onto the uh, fovea. Otherwise, because the object is very close to your eye, the focus point will be behind, behind your eye that you cannot see well. So that's what happens to the lens. And if the object moves away, is far, the light rays are coming from distant and then reaches your eye. So without changes in the lens, so the, all the light rays will be focused here in the, uh, in the in front of the eye or near to the, just right back to the lens. So we won't see a clear image. So in order to do that happen and that the light rays can be focused on the fovea, the lens shape should become thinner so they can send the actual light rays away away from the lens and to the back of the eye and exactly on the fovea. So in order to do that happen, these ligaments, actually ciliary muscles, and they, these ligaments, they tighten. I mean, they get, uh, they are actually contracted. Uh, the, uh, they could have contraction of the ligaments here. Yeah? They pull the lens from both sides. And if they pull something from both sides, what happens? The change becomes thinner, it becomes thinner and longer in actual length and thinner in diameter or narrower and also less round, of course, the more you pull it. So because of that, it sends light back further away from the lens onto the fovea and can get a clear, clear image. Okay, so this is what is happening now. Based on this response and by this knowledge, we can answer the second part of this question. Um, okay, now the lens shape, fat or thin? If you're looking near, so it should be fatter, more round. The stats, uh, the ligaments are now relaxed. They don't pull the lens because the object is so close to the uh, eye. So the answer should be C. So the pupil size becomes smaller to let less light to pass through because it's so bright. 
and the occult armor ball is so close to your eyes, so you need to the that uh, ligaments are in the both side of your lens they relax, so they let the lens to get rounded, more curved, fat, fatter, so it can actually focus the light onto the phobia. So answer is C. Let's move on to the next question. What are the levels of organization of the retina and of the eye? Again, we go back to the level of organization. In the, uh, so we'll see what the level of organization means. It's a cell, tissues, organ or an organ system. Well, I have found a very interesting website here. You can refer to it is the organization of the body in the in the animals or like a human being. So the smallest, the or the lowest level of the organization uh, is cell. Everything is stopped from the cell. So are the basic units of the all the living organisms. Then the group of the cell, similar cell, when they are gathered together. Uh, they do the same job. They call uh, they call them as a tissue. And the group of the similar tissues, or the, the group of sorry tissues, they gather in one place they, for, in order to do the same job or this, for the same purpose. So we call them as an organ. And then the organ, uh, when they are like some of them, like they again they uh, come together, they work together. And they call we call them as a system because they are doing the same job for the same purpose. And the systems together they make body of the organism. <clears throat> I can show you here. For example, this is one epithelial cell. It means like the cell uh, on the like a flesh or skin. And many of them they make this tissue. And many of these similar these tissues are gathered, they make an organ, epithelium. And then after that, many of these organs, they make organ system, and then human. Look at here, the bone structure, the smallest part of this system, uh, a skeleton, which is called as a skeleton is made of the bone and the bones are made of the similar some tissues that are like this these tissues and these tissue are made of the similar cells that are, this is the shape of them how they may look like and again you look at this this is the muscular system of the human being and this muscular system is made of an organ which is muscle. And these muscles are a group of uh, tissues. And this is the structure of that tissue. And these tissues are made of the group of similar cells. This is one cell. So this is the smallest part of this in this level of organization. Again, we have nervous system or nerves. Actually, the nervous system is an organ. The organ is brain, is a spinal cord, or those nerves. Okay. It is made up of tissue. It's made of many organs. One of them is brain, one of them is spinal cord, the nerves themselves, peripheral nerves. And then these are made of the tissue. The tissue is made of cells. This is one single cell. This is how it may look like. This is a nerve cell, a neuron. Look at another uh, system, which is a circulatory system in our body. It is made up of different organs. One of these organs in heart, the other one like these blood vessels. It can be the blood in itself. It can be many. So one of those tissues is blood, for example, is consisted of the plasma and blood cells. And this is one cell, one type of the cell in the tissue, which is red blood cell. And this is how it may look like. And we got another system, which is digestive system, it has many organs, teeth, I don't know, esophagus, stomach, liver, 
uh, intestine, small and the big one, and many, many others. So they work together to, to make this organ system. And but one of the organs, for example, is a stomach. As this stomach tissue is made of the tissues, the tissues are made of the similar cells. This is the shape of one of these cells. Okay. These are the human body organs. Uh, some of them that you can see here, like the ears, like the lungs, like liver, gallbladder, pancreas, the brain, and eye heart and stomach kidney uh, this that uh, many different parts of it and also um, that urinary system and also organ related to the reproduction and all this for the male and female they are different organs of the body as you can see the name of the walls is here tongue is an organ like esophagus is an organ like so do you see the eye here is an organ and is made of a different tissues whatever is inside it is the tissue that make that organ so one of the tissues in the eye is retina one of them is fovea one of them is the lens one of them is iris one of them is so there are tissues that make eye, which is an organ. So in this question, retina, we know that is one part of the eye, and eye itself is an organ. So eye is organ, is not a system. We only have circulatory system, nervous system, digestive system, the all has consists of many organs. So eye is one organ, okay, is one part of the sensory system. And so the one tissue of it is retina. It's one of these structures. So answer is C. Question number four again. Question number four is the same as the one, but in a different diagram. I want it's showing a skin of a mammal. And you see a capillary loop. Okay, this is one of the blood vessels that so how does this actually blood vessel doesn't matter capillary loop or whatever may look like if it, you are in a cold place in a cold environment you feel cold you need to warm yourself so you shouldn't let the heat from your body to escape you should avoid heat loss in order to do that your blood vessel should constrict become narrower so do not let the blood to to send the heat out of your body onto your skin. So that's why you look, when you're in the cold conditions, in the cold weather, your skin like looks very pale, colorless, because the blood, uh, the blood vessels, they get constricted, become uh, shorter, in, smaller in diameter, so less blood actually rushes to your skin. There is a less supply to your skin, so avoid heat loss to do control the temperature inside. So among them, four. So this is wrong, B is totally wrong because it is dilated, it becomes bigger. So I don't want this. And you see the level of them. These uh, capillaries, this blood vessel, they shouldn't move closer to the surface of the skin or away from the surface of the skin. They don't move, they don't walk, they don't uh, actually have any movement. So they have been in the same place. The only thing is in changing the diameter. So these are also wrong because this is moving close to the surface of the skin. And this one is also wrong because it is get flat and it's moving away. So D is wrong, C is wrong, B is wrong. So what is left is A. Understand? Very well. Question number five again, the diagram of the eye. We've got iris, pupil, and then the lens. And also the uh, suspensory ligaments that they control the size of the lens. And let's see, X is a contracted ciliary muscle. muscle. X, okay, ciliary muscle. What happens within when it relaxes? That's one relaxes. So 
But you have to go back and see what happens to the ciliary muscles when they contract and what happens to the uh, curvature of So in the eye structure, when I was talking, uh, there were two types of the actually, uh, one ligament and one, uh, this is called a suspensory ligament. That is the one that I was talking about, that it pulls or gets contracted. So it actually changes the shape, make this lens thinner. And also we have these muscles that are actually controlling this pupil here or the iris. So the iris actually size. So it's a ciliary muscle. The ciliary muscle attached to this part, the iris, and they control pupil size. So for this part, uh, now it's talking about suspensory ligament, uh, how they actually they get it relaxed or they become like uh, contracted uh, or and also the uh, ciliary muscle. How do they actually react to in this condition? Um, so we go back to this table again to see. OK, here it is. Um, so if I want to, in, in the, actually this question paper was saying that uh, when um, X, which is a ciliary muscle and actually is uh, controlling the iris, is uh, what um, actually happens uh, when it relaxes, when the ciliary muscle relaxes, what happens to the lens and the size of the pupil. So because that one is controlling the size of the pupil and also the maybe the curvature of the lens. Um, you look at here. I just want to show this one at uh, this table. Uh -huh, this one. So with the ciliary muscles that are actually connected to the iris, they are relaxed when they get relaxed, um, so is when the actually the objects are far away, and the suspect suspensory ligaments they pull tight, make the lens thinner. It means that these two, this contraction, this is relaxation. So the ciliary muscle and the suspensory ligaments, they look like they like antagonistic. They have the, the work is like one of them is opposite. So one gets relaxed, the other one's contracted. Look at the ciliary muscle again here. When the object is very close, I said the suspensory ligament, they need to actually they need to relax to let the lens to become more flattened. So at the same time, the ciliary muscle, they contract. Okay, so it means that the job is opposite and the lens, you can factor here, is thinner. Go back to the shape. So imagine there is a near object, very close to the eye. So here, the suspensory ligaments they are relaxed become the, and the lens become fatter or flat or more curved, the curvature increases. And at the same time, ciliary muscle, they contract. They open up the iris. They pull the iris and they make the pupil a bit bigger, perhaps the entrance. Let's see here. Ciliary muscle relaxed. Again, opposite. The light is coming from afar. And these ligaments here, the suspensory ligaments, they contract. They pull the lens, make it thinner, less curved. The curvature decreases. And also at the same time, the ciliary muscle, they relax. If they relax, it means that, that the iris to just be in the same point. So the light is refracted less, allowing the eye to focus on a distant object. So they actually, the uh, uh, reaction of the ciliary muscle and the ligaments, suspensory ligaments, are opposite. In opposite. So it means that once one is relaxed, the other one is contracted. Once the other one is contracted, the other one is relaxed.
Okay. And you always know when the suspensory ligament, they are contracted, they pull the lens. So make it thinner. It means the curvature decreases. So by knowing this, let's go back to the. In this video, you can see how the contraction, this is, I should say, pause. This is the ciliary muscle. This is a muscle. These are ligaments. Look at that, not muscle. They are suspend, suspensory ligaments, and this is a muscle called a ciliary muscle. And once it is relaxed, like now, it pulls the ligaments. Actually, it does. Uh, a bit like when it relaxes, it causes the contraction of these ligaments. That's why uh, the, the actual action is quite uh, uh, opposite, uh, it's reciprocal. It means that this one contracts, the ligaments will uh, get relaxed. So here they are contracted and this is relaxed. Now, now the ciliary muscle is actually relaxed. Sorry. Now it is now from relaxation goes to contraction. The contraction causes to actually leave these uh, ligaments alone. So they won't pull these lens anymore. So we don't pull the lens. The lens become fatter, more rounded. You see, the ligaments, they contract, they pull the lens and cause it to get flatter or fatter or less thinner, less thinner or less thicker. And also at the same time, this is relaxed, this ciliary muscle is relaxed. Again. Contraction, relaxation, contraction of ciliary muscle, relaxation of the uh, ligaments. And so because of that, in result, this uh, lens will be fatter, more, more curved, the curvature increases. And it is when you are looking near to the objects that are close to your eye. That's why the, these, the, uh, these uh, ciliary muscles are under contraction when you look uh, the near objects because they are more contracted and they are working harder, working harder, it is more actually a uh, strain in your eye. So that's why it's not good for too long to look at the objects from very so near, close to your eyes or reading, studying. So still so on that's chapter 14 and as well the uh, your hormones. So the hormones, uh, we have different glands and, and this endocrine system is that there are those glands that they uh, produce a secret internally, I mean inside uh, of your body, some kind of chemicals that they make changes into some or reactions into your body or the trigger or start sending a signal to the other cells for initiation of some sort of the responses. One of those glands is pituitary gland and is called as a master gland. It's situated at the base of the brain on that brain. Later we talk about it if you want, but this is not the topic of now, this today's uh, lesson. Then the next one is thyroid gland. It's another gland that produces hormones and it's called the hormone that it produces is thyroxine. And this is not also our concern today. Pancreas produces insulin, another big gland here uh, close to the liver under the liver. And you know that why the, the, usually the right kidney is lower because the liver is very big and the, the biggest part is here and and pushes the liver a bit down. So that's why the white kidney is a bit lower than the left one. Then we have adrenal glands producing adrenaline, which is a hormone, and there are two actually, one about each of these kidneys. Then we have testes in the males, the production of the testosterone in the males, and also in the females or in the female ovaries, they, pro they are produce a hormone called as estrogen. And 
these are the things. Now we'll talk about the adrenal and this kind of hormone that the place of the production is exactly here about the kidneys. There are two small tissues here. Uh, they are glands that they produce uh, adrenaline. They are called as adrenal glands. So there are two, two uh, one on the right kidney and the one on the left kidney. Um, so adrenal, adrenal gland, the role is uh, to release the body, uh, to actually ready the body for the fight or flight response and the effect in increasing heart, uh, increases the heart and breathing rate and dilates the pupils. It's not the only thing that it does, it just is uh, summary more about the adrenaline. Um, this is usually produced in a situation where the body may be in danger, where you are frightened. Uh, you see that uh, you say that you're almost started or I'm like startled um, I'm frightened I someone has attacked you someone has harassed you so that's your you feel like your heart is becoming stronger and uh, your heart could become faster you breathe more uh, shorter but uh, more, more, faster rapid rate and uh, your face maybe red, your eyes dilated, your the pupils of the eye become wider, dilated. Um, this all cause different things to happen in the body and all designed to prepare you to fight with that situation or do move away to flight, to run away. So what are they again? Increasing the blood glucose concentration why the, the blood glucose concentration in your body should increase? Because you need to res your, your cells need to respire more. In the respiration, you need glucose and oxygen. So the more oxygen and more glucose should be sent to the cell for respiration. Okay? So that's why in order to get more oxygen, your breathing rate actually increases. The breathing rate increases. And the... Uh, uh, so more oxygen will be sent delivered to the uh, red blood cells and from there also to your uh, muscle cells. And at the same time, carbon dioxide will be removed away because they are produced after during the respiration. So the waste product or toxic should be moved away from the blood. So they go to the lungs and from there they are excreted away. And, and also... Uh, diverting blood flow towards muscles, so you see that your skin becomes red because more blood is rushing towards the muscle to give more blood or more nutrients, more oxygen to the cells of the muscle because you have to fight or you have to run away. So these are the, the very important, so the muscles need more oxygen, more food for respiration to do more activity. And also, the pupils will be dilated, get wider. It allows more light as much as possible to reach to the retina. So more information can be sent to the brain. You need to get more information so that pupils should get wider to more, let more light enter because that moment is very crucial, very really important for you. It's a matter of the death or life perhaps or something. So don't, here you don't think about if it, too much light and tears into your eye will damage your retina or whatever. So you just need to get more information. So that's let's open up, let more information to allow us to get in, uh, to reach your brain so you can analyze and you can decide based on that what to do. So here the adrenaline effect uh, on you, or the, you fly, uh, you fly, you run away. So is it like the a dilation of the pupils, they will flush skin, trembling, rapid heartbeat, and breathing. And it was because we needed the dilated pupil let you to take more uh, information into your brain and to make that decision. And also the increased heartbeat, it means pulps the blood. Uh, faster and more and the oxygen so the oxygen can be reached to the cells faster because they need oxygen to do more respiration because they need to do some reaction more fun the function faster and more 
So, and also they need to, they produce in the respiration, they produce more carbon dioxide. So it's very toxic, so you should get rid of it. And so the blood carries it away into the lungs to be excreted. So that's why the rate of the breathing also increases. And yeah, and all these things, so sugar level also goes high. Now we go back to the. So in this question, we said that the effect of the adrenaline. Now we know in the breathing causes the more increased rate of the breathing, and about the pulse rate, your heart beats faster more. So both of them increase. So B is the answer. This is this, the rest of the options are incorrect. We will move on to the next question. Question number eight is about the um, show, is a diagram that shows the density of the rod and cone cells. You know that they are light sensitive cells inside your eyes and they detect the light and color. So rods are responsible for light intensity and cones for the color of the light. Across the horizontal section of the retina, because the retina is a tissue into your eye that has lots of uh, these kind of the light sensitive cells. What is the position of the optic nerve? You know that the, I told you optic nerve is the actually where the old nerve in from the eye, they exit the eye and they go to the brain. And in that area, I think we had it in the previous question, uh, the eye structure is not here. Uh, I, I have shown you that one at the end of the eye and close to the fovea, that, that's where there is the um, blind spot and the blind spot is where all those nerves, they go out to the brain and is where there is no actually um, optic cells, no light sensitive cells. Um, so in that area, we need to know that in that area, we shouldn't have any uh, light sensitive cells. Density of the receptors, they are the rod and the cons. You see, the rods are responsible for the light. And the light here, here, there is a lack of the cells. And then again, continues. And here, in the cons, you see the usually all that becomes a lot here. It continues. And up to here, in the between B and C, there is a lack of the cell again. There's a gap. There is no cell. I don't see anything here. And it continues. In the A, we have cones, but we don't have rods. But in the, uh, as you can see, in the between B and C, no rod, no cone, no optic cell, no no cell, it's not sensitive cell are here. But after that, still we got. So the only area that there is no presence of the uh, light sensitive cells, rod or cones, is between B and C or B here. So I just make a circle around B. This is the area that usually is the place of the optic nerve, or we call it as um, relying the spot where we cannot see anything. Question number nine, the fovea of the eye has three kinds of the cones absorbing light of different colors. Which row is correct? Top of cone stimulated. So, red sensitive, blue sensitive, green, and the color that you see. Um, I want to show you first uh, some other information about this part, about the uh, these cells, these kind of the cells that they are light sensitive. So as we said, we have three types of the cone cells, and M cone, L cone, and S cone. And maybe you all know, know, but we have three types of the cone cells. And the, uh, we said that the rod cells are responsible for the intensity, getting the intensity of the light. They cannot get the, the color of the light, but the cone cells they are responsible for the color of the light. So wherever in the retina there are these cone cells, it lets you to get the uh, picture of those colors and see what, what color actually you see. So for M, con, M cones are responsible for the green color. They get the wavelength that actually is um, 
the wavelengths equal to the wavelengths of the green light. And the L cone are sensitive to the red light and S cone are sensitive to the blue light. The cone, actually the eye has all these uh, cone cells, M, L, and S, it means that you should be able to get green, red, and blue colors. Well, of course, the combination, um, if only red and green is received, but there is no blue actually light entering, so you see yellow. And if you are green and the blue color only are there, you just get these wavelengths, so you see cyan, and also if you get red and blue, so the color would be magenta. But all of them, if you get all red and green and blue color for your cone cells, so you will see this one in the middle, which is shared between all, which is a white color. So normally, what we see is a white color because the light is white. The color of the light comes from the sun is white because it has all these colors in it. So a combination of them becomes light, uh, white. Now, now back to the question paper. The type of the, so the phobia of the eye has three kinds of the cones absorbing light of different colors. This is that the and S. So which raw is correct? And um, type of the cone are stimulated if red, blue, green, and what is the color that you see? based on that chart that you saw there. So if you have, uh, okay, we have blue and green, blue and green, they don't make red, this is wrong. Red is a main color, is the original color. So can't be red. And if you have red and green, you have yellow, you don't have blue. This is also wrong based on that chart that I'll show you. If you have red and blue, no green. So red and blue is uh, magenta, so it's not green. Green is the main color. You can main, by mixing the main colors, you cannot make another main color, original color. So this is wrong too. The only answer is if you have mixed red, blue, and green, both are captured with the cones and they are mixed together, you get that share point which was white, so you get the white color. So the answer is D. See how this is, we find out the answer. You have to know, have to get the knowledge, get the picture of that, know what the question is asking from you, be able to go through and understand each option and find the guess the correct answer. Question number 10. A person eats a large bowl of rice. What happens to the amount of insulin, glucagon, and glycogen in their body? Okay, a bowl of rice, lots of carbohydrates, lots of starch, and once it is actually digested rice in the mouth, it is broken down into small sugar molecules, so it gives release lots of sugar. It increases your sugar level. Once the sugar level increases, what happens to amount of insulin, glucagon, and glycogen in the body? Have a look into this chart. This is about the hemostasis and the maintain, maintaining the glucose level inside the body or regulation of glucose in the body. So again, the, actually imagine that this is the normal level of the glucose in your body. And when you eat, so it should, can be lower than normal or it can be above. So your blood glucose can be low or can be very high. So once you eat that bowl of the rice, I told you that rice is changed into, it's broken down, digested into sugar molecule immediately because it is made of starch, it has lots of carbohydrates. Then after blood glucose level rises, after eating that, that's the pancreas. That's the pancreas is a gland that I'll show you is a big one on the yolk uh, liver, that yellow color one, which just looks like a tree or a leaf. So it releases a hormone which is called as insulin. So it produces and releases a hormone called insulin. So insulin level increases 
become more. That's why the people they cannot produce insulin, and the pancreas has got so it's unhealthy. It's not properly working. So you need to get some insulin injections. So now the insulin, what does it do? It stimulates your liver, the cells in the liver, and also the muscle cells to take up the excess glucose from the blood. So it actually all the glucose in the blood. And they send a message to the liver cells and the muscle cells. They should convert this. They should collect all this sugar, extra sugars, and then change it from glucose, which is soluble, into a bigger complex molecule, which is insoluble, called as glycogen. Okay, the glycogen. And this stage, the glycogen is very heavy molecules, and they will be stored in the cells. And the further, further, for example, use maybe once you need more glucose, your body glucose drops. Then the blood glucose level back to the normal because it decreases and back to the normal. So glucagon is a kind of hormone which actually causes glycogen to be broken down back into glucose. We don't want it. So at this level, glucagon uh, is in a very low amount. We have more insulin, more glycogen, by less uh, glucagon hormone. Whereas here is it's not necessary. We need another hormone, which is insulin. So our level of insulin should be high. Glycogen should be also high. Now we knew that that what is happening. So insulin we should should uh, rises. Insulin rises. So between this one C and D, which one is correct? I said the glucagon is a hormone, should be less, it shouldn't be high, so decreases. Glycogen is a big, uh, because the glucose now converted to glycogen, a bigger insoluble molecule. So it is removed from the bloodstream to lower down the glucose level in the blood. So this one increases the answer. Correct answer should be C. Question number 11. So I'm teaching you how to find the answer, how to read, how to get the information and use the information to answer a question. And how to read the question and understand what actually it wants from you, step by step. Hope you later you can do it by yourself. What is not an effect of the hormone adrenaline? So the effect of the hormone adrenaline decreased production of the sweat dilated pupil we know that this is the answer so sometimes you do not know which one is wrong so you want to because it asks which one is not the effect so it means that which one is wrong is not correct about the adrenaline this is what actually the question means so i want to first find out what is the job of adrenaline because i know that so i know that the pupil will become dilated so b is correct so this is not the answer increase blood glucose yes we just learned about it Increase pulse rate, your heart beat faster. Yes, this is also correct. So B, C, and D are the job of the adrenaline. That's what actually it does. So what is left is A. A is A is, the, is not actually correct about adrenaline. That's what the adrenaline doesn't do. So this is the answer. A is the answer. It does not actually, uh, it actually increases the production of the sweat. It doesn't decrease. So this is the answer. A is the answer. What is not an effect? Be careful, that's why they make the not bold, so in the bold color. So the answer is A. Now, this is about tropism. Uh, it's about, uh, about plants, how the plants actually react to the stimulus around them. So the diagram shows an experiment to investigate the response of a plant stem to gravity. And in dog, the result after two days in dog, you see it was uh, actually placed horizontally first. And then you see this doesn't grow straight and horizontal. It continues to move upward and vertical away from the ground. This is what I see. And it has been in the dark. It has been in the dark in the dark room. What is a suitable control for this experiment? Okay. Rotate this slowly. Uh, 
because you know why the boy what do you mean why I did this one uh, suitable control because we want to make sure that is always changes the direction and it always moves away from the earth from in a different direction away from the earth about away from the ground doesn't it's like it's not like the roots that they grow inside the ground and they go towards the soil towards the gravity they move away from the gravity okay they skip from gravity they, uh, this is the geotropism or gravitropism um the reaction of the the reaction that they or the kind of response of the plant uh, regarding the uh, gravity of the earth in the shoot and in the root are different in the root uh, they are they have a positive geotropism while in the shoot or in the stem it is negative it means stay, stay away from it it moves away from it so we want to control this we want to prove that this is so i have to control something uh suitable control for this experiment is that this is the time lapse of the geotropism you see the all the, the shoots they move away from gravity the gravity is very strong uh, so it always comes from the earth the earth pulls the things towards itself but they want to move away so it's the bend up away exactly in the opposite direction that one is straight down the gravity force and this one is straight up Or another experiment that uh, keep rotating one and the other one will be just fixed like this after you have planted the uh, these seeds they grow they germinate and you just uh, actually uh, hang it on this board um, in this direction in this uh, condition and then one of them is just attached to that motor again on the back and keep them this one this rotating is inside the pathway this rotating and the other one will be just fixed there and see what how they grow after some hours this one because it just you keep changing its position it can't actually become confused and just uh, is growing germinating straight but that one is bending away and up and away from the gravity you see because it's a fix in the position now it's a very interesting actually so answer is a we have to keep rotating the plant when the blood glucose concentration is low which hormone is released and which organ releases it so again so blood glucose concentration is low it has dropped it become less than normal so this time your body needs to convert all those uh, glycogens the big sugar molecules that are stored already uh, back into the glucose as much as it can to release it and make it as a soluble sugar send it into your blood to increase your uh, blood sugar level without the sugar most of your neurons won't work your brain will stop working so it becomes like death in coma so what you see the immediate supply of the glucose you need is as an emergency so your pancreas again <clears throat> uh, so what what is happening here again so because the blood glucose level falls the pancreas releases the uh, hormone called as the glucagon and the glucagon stimulates the liver cells to break down the glycogen into glucose and to release it into the bloodstream and then um and at the same time, also the adrenaline speeds up the conversion of the glycogen to glucose for fight or flight or whatever. Then your blood glucose level will go back to its normal, becomes high again, so back to the normal. So this, so gly, uh, glycogen will be produced because of the glucagon hormone, which is uh, released from the pancreas. Okay, so hormone is glucagon 
uh, which is actually released, and the organ responsible for it, the organ which is responsible for the release of the glucagon is pancreas. So the pancreas also is responsible for production of and releasing of the insulin, these two. So the hormone glucagon organ is pancreas. So the answer is B. Well, uh, now we go to the question number 14. I try to make everything answering this question a bit faster the five and becomes bulky is going to be harder to upload on the side. The diagram shows settlings in two experiments uh, on the tropic response of the settlings to gravity and light. So the experiment one is a settling, they put it there, it's germinating, and the shoot and the root. The shoot after three days is growing towards the earth ground or towards the gravity and it should in the absence of the light it is so it's to totally dark there is no light interfering into this uh, actual experiment so it's moving away from the ground or gravity so this is a proof that they shows they have a negative um, gravitropism and the roots they have positive gravitropism but experiment two is the presence of the light but here is just give direction to the light. The light is not actually shining from everywhere. It's just from one point. So the entrance is here. So you see that the shoot and the road are still are responding to the gravity. The same thing. The shoot goes towards the gravity and the sorry the root towards gravity and shoot away. But it's now it's again straight. No more straight. It's a bit lean towards the source of the light. That direction exactly towards the hole that the light beams are coming in. So this the second experiment is a proof of the phototropism that is positive for the shoot and negative for the root. Now you can see here among these ones, uh, which of them the cities have responded to? But of course, the both of them is light and gravity, because in this experiment is a combination of these two uh, so type of the responses. So they are testing the both. So A is correct, it's both gravity and light. Question number 15, again, that's the, about the uh, glucose regulation, sugar regulation in the body, control concentration, concentration of the glucose in the blood. And this is the diagram showing that this is the normal line where the level is suitable, optimum. And from here, when the blood sugar rises, so this is what is happening to is a negative feedback send it back to the normal again and when it is lower it falls lower than that it send it back again to the normal how it is how so which row and the first the glands and the hormones labeled w x y and z w gland w hormone x gland y and hormone z so we said that when they both of the glands that are involved gland W and gland Y should be pancreas. So gland W and gland Y should be pancreas. So adrenal is wrong. So this A and B totally rejected. <laughs> Even without looking, so it's I reject. So from if the gland Y is also pancreas, and that one is also pancreas, the only shared one is D. So the answer is D, without even going further to guess which one is, which, what is X and what is Z. So I just go directly to the answer. It guides me to the answer because gland W and X, both, X, W and Y, both of them should be um, uh, pancreas. Well, the only one that shows gland Y and X are pancreas are this one, D, option D. So for sure, hormone X is insulin and hormone Z is glucagon. Question number 16, which row shows the effect of the increase adrenaline releases. And if we have more release, more production of the adrenaline, in which one? In which one is the proof? In which of these options? So if the so breathing rate increase, I know that pulse rate should increase, the pupil should widen. So in which one we have these all these conditions actually? So it should be. B increases, increases, widens. So B is the answer. 
question number 17. So you know that this is the reflex arc even without reading this part. So what is x? Look at the x. This is where is this the surface of your skin? This is the muscle. So you know that everything, the journey starts from here. These are the receptor cells. End of the, your neurons is attached to this, not completely in contact with the skin, while it's connected to the receptor cells. This one is not a relay neuron. This is a relay neuron. It connects these two neurons together, or neurons or nerve cells, or neuron, another name. Synapse is everywhere a junction between two neurons or nerve cells. It's called a synapse. It's actually a small gap between them. They are not directly in contact. The effector can be a muscle or can be a gland. So I refer to this part. So this is effector. What is left? The receptor. So X is receptor. is what receives or detects the changes in the environment. Which responses occur in the iris of the eye when a person walks away from a dimly light, uh, dimly lit area to a brightly lit area? So from the dark to light, when you move, your iris should get wider. So in order to get wider, you, you just try it. You shine, you shine, you send a uh, torch light light into your eyes, into your eye, and see how your iris actually reacts. When you shine that uh, torch light into your eye, it becomes wider, bigger, and when it, you remove it, it becomes smaller. So in order to that happen again, I said, so it become wide, so it, it is bright in that area. So from the dark to light, it becomes smaller to let the less light to uh, pass through. Sorry, uh, I uh, said it wrongly. So uh, when you, there is more light in order to protect your eyes, you should get a smaller. So in order to get a smaller, the, that circular muscle should contract and the radial should get relaxed. So B is the answer. So the iris becomes smaller. I have discussed this one before. So I need to go through the diagram and explain again, which is the result of the release of adrenaline. Um, the release of the adrenaline is when you are stressed when or anything so the result of the adrenaline on your body or effect of it is no it's not constricted the pupil the pupil get wider and uh, decreasing the breathing rate no you breathe more faster and decrease the pulse rate no your pulse rate or heartbeat increases so these are all wrong. So D is the answer. Increase the blood glucose concentration to set more glucose for respiration inside your cells to get energy, more energy for activities. A boy accidentally touches a very hot object and immediately takes his hand away. In this reflex action, what is the effector? So the effector, we had... Um, Receptor and effector. The receptor is your skin. I said the cells on your skin that touch that one. And when the effector accidentally touch the object, immediately take his hands away. You're just moving your hand. This is the effect. This is the re your reaction. But the effect is uh, affecting a muscle in his arm because you are moving your arms and muscle. So they actually the motor neuron is connected to the effector, which is a muscle. So motor neuron is connected to a muscle and the muscle is the effector here, not a gland, not anything. So this one, D, uh, C is the answer. And 21, which description of how the pupil, the pupil of the eye gets smaller is correct. Uh, when it gets smaller, that's the uh, constriction or contraction of the circular muscles and the relaxation of the radial muscle again. So B is correct. You should repeat this one. These things are many times for yourself. Uh, revise them so you get master in this chapter. The diagram shows the experiment using wet, uh, wet shoot tips to investigate plant growth. 
you caught this spot, the shoot tip is removed, and you see this one get longer, but this one has no change in it. This statement is correct about this experiment. Auxin. So I should auxin is a hormone in, of the plant that usually has its effect is actually uh, opposite in the shoot and the root. And but in the sh in the shoot, usually it, um, where it is more the growth of that cells in that area is long is more they get longer. For example. Now the light is coming from the above, so they are accumulated here in the tip, so they cause the uh, increase in the growth of the cell here at this point, so this actually should get longer. But if the light is from this direction, on the right side, for example, on the left side they accumulate because it's in the dark. They accumulate in the place that is darker, so in that area they grow more, so that's why the shoot will bend towards the sun, you see. It becomes, and it grows here on the left side of the shoot become more, so it becomes longer compared to the right side of the shoot. So this one, it bends this direction, towards this direction. But if it comes from the left, then all the oxygen will be accumulated on the right side of the shoot. And then it will, this time, this side grew longer and this bends towards the sun. So wherever in the shoot there are more oxen, the growth become the growth rate increases. Now, which statement is supposed to be uh, supported? Oxen moves towards the plant by osmosis is wrong. Uh, it has nothing to do with osmosis or anything else. Oxen is made in the shoot tip. Okay, I reserve this one. Oxen is unequally distributed in response to the light. No, is equally respond because the light is actually shining straight. Uh, this is also wrong. Oxygen inhibits cell elongation. No, inhibition means doesn't let it to grow longer. Doesn't let it, it uh, stops the growth of the cells. No, this is also wrong. So answer is B, oxygen is made in the shoot tip. So once you cut the tip of the shoot, because there is no oxygen, there is no more elongation of the shoot happening here. Yeah, this is the end of this question paper. Thank you very much for your attention. I will get back to you. Wait for me. Uh, stay tuned for the next uh, discussion and the next question paper on the next topical on topic of this uh, IGCSE biology book. Thank